Gotta go fast, Ogilvy. <laughs> Y'all, what happened with the Sonic films? Why are they some of the best video game films that I've ever seen in my life? So, let's talk about Sonic. Sonic is freaking amazing. Sonic is great. Okay, so I saw Sonic the first film, when it came out in theaters, I actually did some top 10 gaming videos uh, around it. I had to see it for that. But actually it was a film I really enjoyed in the theaters. So it wasn't necessarily a film that I personally was like, oh my gosh, I have to go see Sonic. But when I saw it, I was amazed at how good it was. And for me, Sonic has always had a special place in my heart just because it was a game that I played a lot when I was younger, kind of grew up playing a lot of Sonic. And I have fond memories of playing that game as well as frustrating memories of playing the Sonic games. Got a lot of frustrating memories. Sonic is a game where you have to dodge, and if you've ever watched me play games, you know I don't really like to dodge. <laughs> Surprisingly, through watching the first Sonic film, there was so many things from those early days of gaming that just came back to my mind, and I just remembered so many facts about Sonic. So many things that I think I loved and connected with Sonic on. Sonic really is a great character if you want to get a video game character that you can advertise to adults and to kids with a movie because kids intrinsically love Sonic. And speaking as someone who used to be one of those kids, I get it. I get it. And now speaking as someone who's an adult who, you know, that has a, a special place just for nostalgia purposes as well, I love it. There's a lot in this film that we get for both adults and for kids. And I think that's what makes it such a great film. Although imagine, we could have had a horror movie of a film. We could have had the film with the original digital Sonic that they wanted to do. Remember the look? Remember that look? Uh, meow? <laughs> that was a thing of nightmares. I'm so glad that they took feedback and fixed it because I don't think this film would have been as much of a success if they hadn't. Oh, uh, <laughs> I guess not. Although that being said, why do I think Sonic 1 is so good and why do I think it still holds up today? Well, I think a big part of it comes down to the cast. We have a really great cast for this movie. You've got Jim Carrey, you've got um, James Marsden. It's just a fantastic cast. Ben Schwartz does the voice for Sonic and he also knocks it out of the park. All around I just felt like the acting was very strong. But it's also just a fun film. Like it clearly is a film that they really just wanted to bring something cool and fun to the fans and you can get that sense. There's just so much commitment to this movie on all levels from the script, the story, the characters, the world, the way things look on the screen. Like they really committed. There's also a ton of Easter eggs in it, which was something when I first watched it, I noticed and loved the fact that we're in Green Hill, as in Green Hill Zone. I thought that was the coolest thing when I saw that in the movie, and I really thought it was fun. But also just the elements of the game that they bring into the world and how they make them a part of the actual universe. So the way the rings are used and I mean, we'll talk about this more in two, but in two, it even gets even more. They really just, they really said, ah, let's just bring everything in here. Let's just bring everything in. Why not? And it works so well with the story they're telling. I also got to say respect to all the shameless sponsorships that happen in this movie. Shout outs to Olive Garden. There is a line that they have in this movie about Olive Garden, and it is when Maddie says to Tom that her sister is suspicious of Tom, right? Rachel. And Maddie says to Tom that Rachel has said to her that she should check his phone for dating apps. And Tom responds like, you know I don't have any, I don't even have any apps on my phone, except for Olive Garden. And then Maddie responds something like, yeah, because when you're there, you feel like family. The way that these lines are said, though, like they're literally said as though those are things these characters would really say to each other. It's such a, a, an ad read, like the lines verbatim are a cold ad read, but the warmth we get from the actors weirdly makes these shameless sponsorships just fit. I mean, some of them are more visual 
in the films, but wow. I was just like, I can't believe they just said that and they just basically put an ad in the movie and I still love it. I still feel like it fits the characters. What's happening? So Sonic 1 just had so much heart. It had so much commitment, like I said, from really, I feel, every department that was involved. You can tell the people making this movie love and have respect for Sonic and the Sonic properties. And I mean, the fact that they were able to get Jim Carrey as Eggman still blows my mind. The fact that this is going to be in Sonic 3, we're getting Jim Carrey's last performance and it's as Dr. Robotnik. What is that? And why does it feel so weirdly fitting? And why is Jim Carrey so good as Robotnik? It's because Jim Carrey is so good. He's just on another level. He is a legendary performer. And I don't know, I'm kind of I'm kind of delighted that this is the last role that he's going to be playing. I just, he's so good. He's so good. This film also probably wouldn't be as good if it wasn't for Jim Carrey. But let's talk about Sonic 2. So this was my first time watching Sonic 2, full disclosure. I actually had never seen it. I came out and I did want to watch it and I just didn't get to it. And then I heard it was really good, but I thought, okay, well, at this point, though, it's got to be like just for kids, right? Because like Sonic 1 was fun and I felt like it was for everyone. But the amount of kids that I know that just like loved Sonic, like all of my friends' kids, all of the kids that I've run into, they all are obsessed with Sonic and Sonic 2 and Knuckles. Everybody loves Knuckles. And I was like, whatever, this is probably going to be like a lot of kid stuff. But then I watched it. And also Idris Elba being Knuckles what timeline is this? How did we do this? Once again, the cast for this film is outstanding. And the fact that also every actor came back, like down to the, the military general or whatever, that guy came back, everyone came back for this movie, which means that they hopefully were paid well, but also I assume that people had a good time on set. I assume it's fun to make. I would think these are pretty fun to make. It looks like people are having fun on the screen. And Sonic 2, I was surprised. It has the exact same tone as Sonic 1. It didn't feel like it was too juvenile to me. It felt like anyone could watch this movie and really love it. It was for all ages. It just was like a bigger version of the first Sonic film. So the second Sonic film just feels like it's... We're, we're extending out in terms of the level of the threat that we're dealing with. And this one, you know, we're going after the Master Emerald. And the fact that the Master Emerald is in this and is so intrinsically tied into the story, once again, I loved that. I loved that. We get Eggman back in this one. He was trapped in Mushroom Hill Zone and he has returned. Thank goodness. And just as good as the first movie. Really love Jim Carrey in this. And I, I want to say something that I really love about his Dr. Robotnik is that he's always evil, but you can understand why he is the way he is. But they don't ever make you feel sympathy for Dr. Robotnik. Like, you understand him. You understand why he is the way he is. And you can even, like, reason with it. Like, you're like, okay, well, he is this way for a reason. But they never try to make him this sympathetic character who like potentially could be good. And I don't know, maybe we'll get that in Sonic 3 because it does look like he's going to team up. But I think he's still going to be evil. He's still a likable character, even though he's evil, but they keep him fully evil. And I, I really appreciate the commitment to letting him be a villain because so many stories these days take villains and reform them, which is also a great story. Don't get me wrong. I just hate that it happens with like 80% of our villains now, either that or they die. So to have a villain that stays evil is still interesting and you understand the motivations of the character throughout multiple films is impressive to me. Sonic 2 just gave us more of what we loved from Sonic 1. They once again had even more Easter eggs and had even more shameless sponsors that are all fantastic and ridiculous. It had the same level of heart. It actually made me cry. What is happening? What is happening? When Rachel is talking to her boo, who turned out to be an undercover agent. I don't know what happened to me, but I was emotionally drawn in. I think it's also the music in these movies, though. The music is very much an emotional core. And without the music, I don't know what these movies would be like. I, I don't think they'd be very good, to be honest with you. Music, they definitely use the music. Or I don't know, they'd still be good, but it would just not things wouldn't sell as well, I guess. Moments wouldn't sell as well. They wouldn't be as believable. So when I say more, the other thing is they gave us additional characters as well. So we're introduced to Tails, aka Miles Prower, Miles Prower, and Knuckles. And Knuckles, I became a 
kid, I guess, because I also really love Knuckles. This movie made me want to cosplay as Knuckles. I never thought I would want to do a Sonic cosplay. I never thought I would think to myself, I need to do a Sonic cosplay. But I need to do a Sonic cosplay now? So overall, I think I would say that Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 definitely stand up. Should you go back and watch them? Yeah. Are these movies that I would even own on DVD? I think so. I really find them to be so fun and so entertaining and just they have a good emotional core, but they're the right amount of lighthearted. They give you a sense of hope and they just like make you feel warm and fuzzy inside. There's something really comforting about these films. I don't know if it's the nostalgia or if it's just the fact that the films are pretty well made or if it's a combination of things i don't know if it's sonic and i just really love sonic and i didn't know i didn't know i think everyone loves sonic i think if you don't love sonic i don't know maybe you're not okay maybe you need to play more sonic i need to play more sonic this these movies also made me want to play the games which i think is great i think that's something you would like your films to do that are basically selling a video game franchise make you want to play the games unlike some films which made me want to like take a break from the games these actually make me want to play them more so that's nice uncharted I'm, I'm looking at you i've never played uncharted but after watching that movie i was like i know i should play these games and i think they're fun but uncharted just i found it to be so boring i was like i don't know how you make this boring but why do i keep falling asleep watching this movie so overall sonic one i would give a five out of five that's how much i like it five rings out of five rings sonic two i think i'll give it four emeralds out of five it was still really solid but i think you just can't really fully beat Sonic 1 because the first Sonic film, I don't know, it just kind of came out of nowhere and was so amazing. You know what I mean? But I will say, I feel like Sonic 2 did carry it through. And I, I was nervous that with a sequel, we were going to fall off a bit, but we didn't fall off. It maintained really well. And like I said, they did give us more to keep us more interested in that film and to just really bring it. So they did bring it. It just, the magic of the first Sonic is... I don't know. I don't know if you can recapture that. So that's my thoughts on these. I'm also going to be doing a review on Knuckles. So make sure you check that out. Knuckles season one, watching all of that. And I'm very interested to see how I feel about that. And if I like it as much as these, I'm really excited now for Sonic 3 after going back and watching these films. Let me know what you think of Sonic in general as a video game franchise. Let me know what you think of the movies. Are you here for the movies? Are you not here for the movies? Why, why not? Let me know down in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. But until then my friends stay nerdy bye and go fast gotta go fast gotta go fast